everybody, and welcome to another week of Let's Talk. I am your host, author, Dre Lett. This is the show where we inform, inspire, and motivate. We get you going during these tough times and beyond. So come on in the room and have a seat so we can let's talk. First and foremost, I want to say to you and your family, have a happy, safe holiday season. This is the season where we love on one another and we give and we appreciate one another. We should be doing that every day, but this is going to be an amazing year, I believe, for the holiday season. So happy holidays. Okay, you guys. So as you know, you can view my show every week or anytime you want, any hour, any day um, on Roku. You go to Roku and you type in the search bar MJ Own Network. Then you type in the channel Let's Talk with Author Drelet. So if you ever feel like you've missed a, a taping of the live virtual show or you just want to binge watch or you need to catch up, you can do it at any given hour, minute of the day. Just go to Roku and you can watch it there. On Facebook Live, what we're doing on Facebook Live on Friday nights, we're going to go down to taping two Fridays a week. And on Facebook, there you can actually uh, join the live virtual audience. And there you can chime in, you can ask questions, things of that nature. And I'm going to put up on the screen the information on Facebook. The Facebook page is called Let's Talk with Author Drillette. There, like I said, you can watch virtually live. After we record the show, it then goes up on the Roku uh, network, okay? So um, hopefully some of you can tune in live if you're watching this in the recording phase, and you can give me a shout out where you're watching from, ask questions and comment. And also, if you're watching in a recording phase, you still can go on the Facebook and send me a, a message and messenger of your comment or your question that you may have. And I'll make sure that my guest gets it and respond or I will respond. So you guys, um, let's talk about return on investment as it pertains to relationships. Oh my goodness. Yes, she is back. Relationship counselor and author Kimberly McCants is here to take a deeper dive into the subject. She'll be on the virtual stage shortly, so you don't want to miss this. She is amazing. You guys, and what's hot news? Oh my goodness. Every week I, you know, I, I struggle with what to cover because so much is always going on. Things that I just cannot believe. So the first one I want to address is, you know, Sam Bankman Freed. He is or was one of the richest men in the world. I think he was worth $26 billion. You say, well, who is that guy? He is the founder of crypto. And basically, he's a, he was the CEO of FTX. So basically, what happened the other day, after dozens of affiliated companies filed for bankruptcy and one of the most stunning corporate implosions ever. So again, he founded crypto and he's CEO of FTX, both of which filed for bankruptcy. Oh, my goodness. Almost overnight, customers around the world were left scrambling to recover billions of funds that they deposited on the platform. Bankman Freed's own multi-billion dollar personal wealth evaporated. It just went poof, gone. And crypto firms with financial exposure to FTX began to buckle. One of the key questions surrounding Bankman Freed is whether FTX, his crypto exchange platform, misappropriated customer funds when it made loans to his hedge fund called Alameda. He said, quote, I didn't knowingly Kamungo funds, he said, I was frankly surprised by how big Almeida's position was, unquote. FTX experienced a run on the, the run on the bank in early November and quickly collapsed in the midst of a liquid liquid crunch. He said, quote, look, I screwed up. I was CEO of FTX and I had a responsibility and I screwed up. You guys, what do you think about that? Is that reasonable? Is this not starting to sound like another uh, Bernie Madoff situation? If you know who that was, he was the guy that had the pyramid scheme and stole millions, stole some people's life savings, their retirement funds or 401ks, and he was convicted and sent to prison. So, you know, I don't know. I, I really don't know what's going on here, but supposedly this guy is now only worth he said, I watched the interview, he's only worth about $100,000 and that's on a credit card. He lost everything. So think about those people that took their life savings and 
and gave to this guy. I don't know. I guess I'm old fashioned and maybe I'm dating myself, but I want to see my money. I'm sorry. I'm not feeling this digital currency crap stuff. I'm just not. I, maybe I'll get there one day, but right now, no way. Mm -mm. Let me see my, my coins, as, as they say in my hand. I pray those who invested their money get some of their money back some kind of way. But it sounds like this guy is only he only has one hundred thousand dollars to his name. So we're going to lift uh, those investors up in prayer. Such a shame. Such a shame. Just know going forward, don't get involved in any pyramid schemes. If you can't see your money in your hand by going to a bank, don't do it. That's just my two cents. That's just my two cents. OK, another what's hot news, according to page six. T.J. Holmes. Now, some of you are wondering, who's T.J. Holmes? So if you watch Good Morning America, Good Morning America and GMA3, it comes on at 1 p.m. on the East Coast. He's that nice looking uh, gentleman with the, I think he's got hazel eyes. I like him because he's charismatic. He's always laughing. He keeps it real. He doesn't give you the feeling of an anchor that's real stuffy, but he's really lax and I, you know, I, I, I like to watch him and, you know, his other uh, co-anchors and so forth. Well, anyways, this is where it gets messy. T.J. Holmes' wife, right? She was blindsided by his alleged affair with his Good Morning America co-anchor, Amy Robach. Oh, my goodness. An insider told Page Six. I got this information from the website, Page Six. The staffer told uh, tells Holmes that his wife, Marley Figbeg had been separated for six months, but were trying to work things out when news of the romance with Roebuck broke Wednesday. So here she is trying to work on her marriage. She turns on the TV or someone tells her that he's had this, that he's having this affair with his coworker. She it says it goes on to say she's devastated. She had no idea, the source says. She had they hadn't been together in a while. I guess he lives in New York and I believe she lives in Atlanta, but they were trying to work it out. They were just together for his birthday back in August. The source goes on to say that Feedberg, his wife, hasn't been wearing her wedding ring. The now estranged couple uh, were attempting to reconcile. Reps for Holmes, TJ, and Faber didn't return uh, the page six request for comment. So I'm just like, really? Really? Okay, I get that nobody's perfect and things are going to happen. But my pet peeve is if you're involved with somebody else, first and foremost, break it off, get a divorce, or get separated, or, or whatever you need to do, settle that relationship before you move on to a next. Because apparently... TJ and his uh, co-worker, who's a co-anchor with him, they both are married, both have children. There's so much involved. And now they're on TV. And according to ABC News, the ABC Network, they said they're not going to reprimand them. In fact, they like it. It brings ratings. I'm like, really? So, you know, the craziness, you know, like I said, break that down, you know, get rid of it or, 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 or I don't know, come out of that relationship before you go into something else. I, I despise cheaters. I really do. And karma's real. You know, the old people back in the day used to say the same way you get them is the same way you lose them. I.e., if you was cheating to get with her or she was cheating to get with you, you're going to end up losing them by cheating on you. So I don't know. Just do right. That's all I got to say. Let's talk, fam. What are your thoughts? Put in the comment section what your thoughts are on that subject. I'm going to take a look and, and read them out. And if you're watching this in recording phase, send me a message on Messenger. I would love to see what you guys' thoughts are. I know I, I can be a little old-fashioned, but in that one, I don't know. You're breaking up families. Children are going to be affected. It's a whole mess, I tell you. And this last one's hot news uh, story is, oh my goodness, you guys. Mm. According to NBC News, Twitter has shut down Kanye's page down due to his rude, racist posts. I'm not going to even repeat what he posted. Um, my question is, what has happened to him? I'm getting that. Did you guys see that movie Get Out? I'm getting that Get Out feeling. Like when Kanye first came out, I'm not big into hip hop, but there are some hip hop artists that I like. And he was one of them. He His music was real. He was talented. And all of a sudden, he just, I don't know what happened. Um, it, you almost feel like somebody then took his brain out and put somebody else's brain in his body. He's running around with, you know, who I'm not going to say his name and he's running around with known races, known white supremacists. It's a mess. What is going on? Where's his family? Where's his friends? Can somebody reel him in, please? Can somebody just say, man, um, you know, I don't know. I don't know if his ex-wife tried, but you guys, we got to pray for him because it's such a shame to see a talented man lost.
just lost. So let's pray for him that somebody will reel him in and just and get him together. So again, you guys comment and tell me what your thoughts are on that. Um, we're going to take a brief break. Um, also, while we are on break, please make sure you put your name and the city you're watching the show from. Give me a shout out. I will definitely give you a shout out um, and acknowledge you. So we're going to break here momentarily for a, uh, a, a message from our sponsor. Okay, here we go. from our sponsors. 
You guys, make sure that you support them. Richard Houston, rocking Richard Houston, wrote a book about his 60 plus years of roller skating. He's in his 70s and he is still roller skating, you guys. Make sure you support him and buying that book. There's great things down the road that's coming for him. You, you'll soon see. And also support that massage oil. That is from Kimberly. The holidays are coming up. And what better way to surprise your mate with some massage oil? So you guys support her as well. All right, before we bring in my guests, I just want to acknowledge the um, Let's Talk fam. I see who is tuning in tonight. I see quite a few of you are tuning in. Let's see here. Mark, which is one of the executive producers, hubby, watching from the man cave. Carla, hey girl, one of my faithful uh, Let's Talk fam supporters is watching from Atlanta. Hey, Irie, my baby girl's watching from Atlanta as well. Uh, Richard is tuning in from Detroit. Yes, Richard, how are you, sir? Uh, let's see, George Brooks is tuning in. George, I don't know where you're tuning in from, but hello, sir. Appreciate your support. Alon, yes, indeed, my sister, she's watching from Oaktown, Oakland, California. Yes, indeed. Okay, and let's see. Okay, so some people chimed in on uh you know the two top the several topics we talked about the tj holmes cheating and kanye and so let me just go ahead and go down the line here um it looks like uh richard said nothing better than an american green money that's the guy that did all the you know stealing oh my goodness um mark said he made off with their funds isn't that horrible i think he should be tried like made off i really do i really do if, if they can prove it Try him and send him to prison. I'm so sorry. Um, Richard said it's a vicious cycle. No one will come out happy. That's going back to the cheating. Absolutely, Richard, you are correct. Um, or that might be uh, attributed to the money scandal. Let's see here. Oh, Richard said he lost the best thing he ever had. Now is running crazy talking about Kanye. Oh, I know. Something ain't right. I think the Get Out movie, <laughs> they took his brain out or something. I don't know. All right. So, oh, and Carla said, lastly, I agree. Break a relationship off rather than cheat on a person. Don't be messy. That is so true, especially when you got kids involved. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. So, yes, indeed. I appreciate that. You guys for tuning in. Love you. And the rest of you that are um, scared to say hello, I get it. It's all good. Thank you for your support. I see you watching. All right. So let me go ahead and introduce my guest. She is phenomenal, you guys. I think great things are coming her away. I really do. She's so talented at what she does. Um, this is Kimberly McCants. She's our show's relationship counselor. Tonight, she's going to continue her series on return on investment as it pertains to relationships. Let's welcome to the virtual stage author, relationship counselor, Kimberly McCants. Let's bring her on in the room. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. <laughs> How are you doing? I am doing well. How about yourself? I'm good. I'm smiling because I love when you come on. You give such great I advice. Not that I'm having any issues in my marriage, but you know, hey, sometimes you hear things you go, I didn't think of that. So exactly. by all means, I love you coming on, girl. So Thank you. That being said, I'm going to turn it over to you. I'm just going to sit and listen. You guys get your pens and pe paper out. Yes. Sure you ask questions and comments. And um, I'll make sure Kim sees it. And Kim, I'm going to let you do your thing, girl. Well, all right. I appreciate you. I'm always honored. So thank you for that again. So let's jump in. Let's start. So we're first going with um, getting an understanding of what investment is. What does it mean? What, is, what does the term itself mean? What are and what things are involved in investments? So the investment is something of value worth purchasing because it shows a potential to be profitable. If you're taking notes, I'm going to give you, I'm going to read that again. And I want you to pay attention to certain words. Okay. An investment is something of value worth purchasing because it shows a potential to be profitable. OK, value shows profitable. Those are the words you want to look for. It is purchased with something else of value. So basically, there is an equal exchange. Now, obviously, in this definition, I'm talking about monetary. So I'm going to break it down as it pertains to the relationship. So we're going to substitute the word purchasing and put in the word supporting 
or advocating or endorsing or guaranteeing. We use those words instead of purchasing, okay? The word value is the regard that something is held to deserve, the importance, worth, or usefulness of something, the principles or standards of behavior. So again, what you're looking at, I'll start from the, the last, principles or standards of behavior. The next, the regard that something is held to deserve, the importance, worth, or usefulness of something. The next, profitable. Profitable means that it's beneficial. It's useful, okay? Profit, what is a profit? Profit is obtained, uh, obtained a, something that's obtained as an advantage or a benefit, especially from an, an investment. So it's something that you obtain as an advantage from um, your investment. This is what is, what everybody's looking for. You wanna make sure that you're gaining something from what you're putting your energy into. You're looking for the profit, okay? This is what you get out of it. It is an advantage, the benefit of, okay? So the breakdown, the breakdown as it pertains to the relationship sounds like this. An investment is the person or situation that has value based on its usefulness that is worth or deserving of supporting, advocating, endorsing, or guaranteeing because it has shown the potential to be useful or beneficial in such a way that the investor gains an advantage. Oh, okay. Okay. Me. You got to keep these things in mind because it, it get deeper. <laughs> it gets deeper. So you got to understand at this point, um, what exactly, like, how do you define investment period? Well, generically speaking, investments are resources. Resources are valuable. They are also characterized two ways. So you have renewable resources and you have non renewable resources as these pertain to people, okay? Renewable means that it is capable of replenishing itself at the same rate it is being used. That's what mm. the renewable. Non-renewable means it has a limited supply, okay? So in relationships, a renewable investment is capable of replenishing itself at the same time that it is being used. That means reciprocity. That means it is going to continue to give to you because it can continue to give to itself. It never runs out, it's ongoing. You don't have to worry about, well, I'm gonna give you all of my love and then I'm gonna be depleted. You're, that's not gonna happen because it's renewable. If you're with a person who is renewable, or it operates as a renewable investment, they're not going to run out. They know how to give to themselves and give to you. It's uh, reciprocated. If, however, this person is non-renewable, they're going to be very limited in what they're able or willing to give, which means there's going to be what we know as some unequal yoking happening, okay? You're going to be giving way more to a person than they are able or willing to give. You're going to get to a point where you have given them so much or they have given so much, then they're like, you know what, I'm, I, I've given you everything I got, I'm done, and that's it. There, there's nothing else. There's no way of, of replenishing that because they don't have the ability to do so or the willingness to do so. So you got to be careful with that. So you have the renewable and the non-renewable, all of these are uh, investment uh, uh, resource types. Okay. Um, at this point, we have to also remember the types of investments. So we talked about it uh, last time that there were three types inv of investments that we're gonna actually discuss briefly. And that was the short-term, the long-term, and the defensive. 
So the short term, obviously it has a time limit. With the short term investment in a relationship, this means you already have set in your mind, you don't want anything serious. You don't want anything lifelong. You want something that's a hit or miss, a hit it and quit it, a couple of weeks, a month, or seasonal, whatever it is. You, you already know this is not a long-term thing. That's, that's not the point. You're looking for a short-term investment. So if this is what you're looking for, then the other person needs to also be on that same level. You don't want to get into any type of relationship with somebody and you're not on the same, you don't have the same understanding. You want a 30 minute, a 30 minute relationship and they want a 30 day at minimum relationship. It's not going to happen. It needs to be made clear what's going to happen. The long term relationship, long-term investments, obviously we're looking at the, the more um, till death do us part types thing, type of, of relationship. These are the ones who are looking for uh, long-term commitments. They're all in, no matter what we go through, we're in it. We're going to find a way to fix it. This is it. This is our contract is renewable by default. You know, this is, this is what we're doing. So till death do us part, period. And then you have the defensive. Now, this one is probably new to a lot of people. The defensive uh, investment is one that requires you to regulate your portfolio. So mm. I related the portfolio as being your past, your previous relationships, what has gone on then. So what you have to do is take a look at what you came from. This can be family. This can be, you know, intimate relationships, friends, whatever. Look at what you came from and you have to do comparisons because a lot of times what will happen is we'll get into relationships, not realizing that we're bringing along some type of trauma from a previous relationship, or we're looking for the same type of relationship that we were once in, even though it's toxic, or we're doing comparisons with the person that we're with to the person that we used to be with. And that's not a good look. Nobody wants to be compared with anybody, but let alone somebody from your past. Mm -hmm. That's going to cause some friction in your relationships. So in a defensive um, investment type, you have to look at what you've been through, what type of uh, person you've drawn, what kind of things uh, or factors about these individuals you were interested in, what was the the um, underlying, uh, the, the common denominator, if you will. Look at those things and make sure you're not bringing those things into a new relationship because it's not going to be profitable for you. Okay. Mm. Now we have to deal with what the investor, nobody thinks about that. When you, when people go into investments of any kind, they just figure, well, I'm going to take this money. I'm going to put it on this is that and the other. And hopefully I'll get my money back. Hopefully I'll make a profit, but they don't stop to think, am I even prepared to be an investor? Mm. What is my reason for being an investor? So in a relationship, you need to know why you want to be, why you want to invest in a relationship, why you want to invest into someone else. What are you looking for? What is your goal? What is your purpose? Um, so the investor is an individual who puts in or contributes something of value into an entity for the purpose of a return. Again, the investor also has to put in something of value with a purpose of the return also being something of value. So when I'm saying something of value, I'm looking at it as you as the individual are the something of value. So you're putting yourself into this uh, investment, You're, you are the um, contribution. So yeah. 
what about you makes you um, profitable even to the investment as the investor? What can you contribute to what you're trying to get something out of? Wow. So this is, this is, it's is, is not a, a one-sided thing. You know, you can't go and say, well, this is what I want my man to be about, or this is what this woman should be about. If she's not doing this, then we can't, you know, it, it, it can't, it can't work that way. It's always a 100, 100, never 50, 50, 100, 100. That goes back to what we talked about um, when we, we were talking about the, um, what are you bringing to the table? Bring right. the table. That's this. Bring the table. Same, uh, same platform, basically. Looking at yourself, what do you have? Are you ready to give what's necessary to get what it is that you're uh, investing in? So there are uh, five things that we'll discuss um, that you need to consider before becoming an investor. Okay? okay. The first thing you have to consider is the market. Oh. You got to study the market. You got to know what's available, right? You have to pay attention to everything about your potential investment. You got to ask some questions that most people wouldn't ask. You got to make people feel a little bit uncomfortable with your questions. You got to give them something to think about. You know, you don't want yes or no answers or things that sound good to you, or you don't want people to tell you something because they think it's going to make you feel good or because they think that's what you want to hear. Make them uncomfortable. See yeah. how they respond. Now, it's not that you're deliberately trying to, you know, cause a fight or or, you know, be belligerent with them is, is not that, but you want to ask questions that require a conversation. That's those TED Talks. You got to tell me, explain, and describe. You know, I need to know everything that I'm asking. I need to know that you are worth my time. You are worth my thought to even invest in you. If, if I even want to go further than, hello, how are you doing? Because I might not. Depending on how you respond, I might not care after that point. <laughs> so okay. you got to ask these questions. You know, we just don't do it. So again, you have to study the market and then you have to know what is your goal? Again, what is your goal? What is your purpose? Is your purpose to get into this relationship to invest? Is it self-fulfilling? Meaning, mm. is it it's something that you want to get into just because it makes you feel good to help somebody else? Are you wanting to be in a relationship because you want a family? Are you wanting to be in a relationship because you have insecurities and you want someone to fill voids for you? Are you just afraid to be alone? Are you looking for a partnership? Whatever it is, you have to know that before you get into, before you start investing. What do I... What do I want for myself? And be honest with that. A lot of people are not willing to be honest with themselves about what they want because there's a fear. If I say this is what I want, I'm going to be judged on that and I'm not going to be able to be with anybody. Well, that's not true. People really do respect and want the truth, but we're afraid to give it because we've already processed what we think the outcome is going to be if we give the truth. Because as a society, we're not used to telling the truth. That becomes a problem. Ooh. The next thing you want to consider is your time frame. That goes again with the short term, the long term, the one night, the um, defensive. All, it, it goes with that. How long do you want this investment to go on? How long do you want this relationship to go on? What type of relationship are you actually looking for? Um, the next is your risk tolerance level. This oh. is what are you willing to give change or lose? Ooh. How much of you will you allow yourself to be vulnerable with? Are you willing to change your lifestyle? Are you willing to lose some connections with your family? Are you willing to lose some opportunities? Whatever it is, are you willing to do is what are you willing to risk? We get into these relationships without a real thought of 
there's a possibility that I could lose everything. Ooh. I can lose my mind, one. I can mm. lose my social status. I can lose my income. I can lose my friends. I can lose my job. Is it worth it for me? Am I willing to take that risk to be in this relationship? You have to think about that. What is your risk tolerance level? Okay. And then the next is the upfront costs. Oh. What? Okay. The upfront <laughs> cost. What is it going to cost you to be involved? This is, will it cost you your independence? or your ability to move as a single person? Will it cost you your space? Will it cost you your time? Will it cost the individual's characteristics? You know, is it is it going to be something that is so uncomfortable for you that you're not willing to pay the cost for that? You know upfront, this is what you're going to have to do that goes along with the risk. Are you willing to do it? Are you willing to pay the cost to get what it is you want. Most of us are not very one-sided or very shallow with it. So you have to think about that. And then the next, the, the fifth thing is what's the potential return? What is the potential return? What could you gain, but what could you lose? Mm. Not what are you willing to, but what could you gain or what could you lose? What is your ability? This is this is a, a, a real serious one. I refer to it as the emotional agility, your ability to recover from a loss. So if you lose, are you able to recover from the loss? Ooh. If you're not able to recover from a loss, you are not ready to invest because mm. there is always an, uh, an, an, a, a chance that you could lose. And if you put so much into something and you're not prepared for any and everything that could possibly happen, you can find yourself in an emotional and a psychological down spiral. And it'd be a really, really unhealthy place for you to be. A lot of people don't recover from that because they haven't made provisions for the just in case I lose. You have to have, it's like a, a cushion, if you will. And I'm not saying that you got to have backup relationships. I'm not, I'm not saying that. Yeah. But you have to be stable within yourself, emotionally, spiritually, financially. All of you have to be stable when you're alone. Okay. So it's yeah. like when you're alone, you don't feel by yourself. When you feel by yourself, when you're alone with you, you're not ready mm, because deep. it means that you're looking for somebody else to fill that void. You're looking for somebody else to occupy space that you're not ready to be in by yourself. Sometimes there's a fear of well, what will happen if I'm sitting still by myself alone and my conscience starts talking and I hear it and I don't like what it's saying. What happens at that point? So we make yeah. sure we put ourselves in a situation where I don't want to. I don't want to have to do that. So I'm gonna make sure I'm always with somebody. I, mm -hmm. I found that a lot of people that I know, clients or not, have never had downtime. They've never been by themselves. They don't know what it feels like to just be with themselves. They're always connected to somebody. So. When the time comes, when you're going to be forced to be by yourself, how are you going to handle you? This mm. is how you learn you is to be with you. But if you're avoiding that, it's going to come up. Mm -hmm. You're going to be put in these situations where you're not going to be able to avoid it. So you, you, you got to go through those five steps. The next thing we will talk about is when you should invest. Okay. When the cost is low, when the cost is low enough to risk a loss and losing it won't create a deficit. So that's what we're talking about. If you are, if you have to give something into a relationship, you're, you're giving you into the relationship 
And it is not costing you your self-esteem. It's not costing you your self-respect. It's not costing you your identity. If it's not doing that, you can consider it. If it's doing any of that, that means it's causing a deficit, a self-deficit. It's taking something out of you. Something is going to be depleted and there's no one else that can fill that up but you. So if you are, are going to consider investing, you have to make sure the cost is low enough that if there is a loss, um, that it will not create a deficit in yourself. You're not going to look at yourself and not see you. You're not going to look at yourself and not know the value of you. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to be in a downward spiral. You're not going to be depressed. You're not going to you know, want to go and do something drastic to yourself. That's the oh. deficit. Mm -hmm. um, the next is when your income outweighs your debt. So that's your, your debt to income ratio. So okay. your income... Your income is your self-stability in all aspects. When your, your debts would equal your traumas, your, your past relationships, your insecurities, codependencies, addictions, things like that. When your self-stability in all aspects outweighs your debts, all those other negative things, when it outweighs that, then you can consider investing. If your debt to income ratio is higher, if your debt ratio is higher than your income ratio, you are trauma. Ooh. You are trauma. And oh. you're going to bring trauma because you are that. You're living it. You are attracting it. You must make sure that you are healthy and stable in every aspect of your life before you try to bring somebody else into yours or before you enter into someone else's. That's the uh, <laughs> people don't do that. They don't do they, they don't. Do one to the next at okay. all. Um, the next is when you have thoroughly, and we talked about this already, when you have thoroughly evaluated your portfolio, that's all your previous invest investments, and are able to determine, discern, and dismiss all that no longer serves you. That means you're not bringing along no baggage and you're not doing repeats. You have looked at everything that you've been through. You have looked at all your past connections, whatever type they were. You were able to see where you went wrong. Not what they did, but where you went wrong. What you allowed yourself to be victim of. What you allowed yourself to receive or not. What you have um, opened yourself up to. This is all about you before you get into the relationship. Check yourself and allow other people that care about you that are genuine to check you as well. This is the being honest. This is the being transparent with self. Self, you know, you done messed up. You know, you was insecure. You should have never done that. You should have told that man, no, you should have walked away from her when she did this. These types of things. We don't do it. Make sure you have done the comparison. What did, what were you coming from? What did you come from? and make sure you don't repeat it. If you find yourself repeating things in your relationships, that means you have not learned the lesson. Oh. You're going to keep repeating it until you learn the lesson. And the lesson gets harder and harder, but it's the same lesson. If you don't want to repeat it, learn it. It hurts only one time. It only yeah. has to hurt one time, unless you keep repeating it. Oh. So um, let's see, where do I want to go after? That, that is so deep. Girl, that's it, so deep. It's, it's heavy, honey, I'll tell you. Um, and then you also want to be mindful that investments fluctuate. They go up and down. You don't want to uh, look at your investment one day and it's, it's high. It's high energy. It's loving you. It's giving you everything you want, you know, it's doing all that. And the next day is down in the dumps, it's depressed, it's feeling some type of way, you don't have any money, whatever. And then you pull out. We are so impatient. You know what I'm saying? We want what we want. We want it to maintain consistently. We want you to be high at all times. 
naturally we want to be naturally high at all times. We don't want to deal with the lows. And the moment we see something low, oh, we got to go. Uh, yeah. That's not how this works. Right. You know, right. there are ups and downs, and then you're not going to always be on the same uh, time frame when your partner is up. You may be the one down, or vice versa. It's going to do this eventually. See right here, right there. Eventually, yeah. you're going to. You're going to match. It's going to do that. But somewhere you're going to get to the same level. Be patient with that. Don't pull out so fast. Be patient. Watch it grow. Stick around for the maturity of it. Don't withdraw your dividends. OK, don't pull your funds out. Don't withdraw your investment. Be patient with it. Watch it grow. Continue to see that you got to keep putting into it. The more you put into it, the more opportunity you create for the expansion and the higher rate of return. Mm. Okay. Mm. Let's keep it, let's, let's oh, keep it going. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get this real quick. So like the next part, the fourth part is at what happens after the investment. Okay. So after the investment, like I say, it's, it's an ongoing thing. You have to continue to monitor it. You have to watch how it moves, what influences the movement the level of stability or volatility, the external factors that are influencing, are there other people that are around? Are there addictions? Are there psychological factors, emotional factors? You know, anything like that, you gotta pay attention to it. Um, has there, is there any growth? Has the potential for growth increased, decreased, remain the same, you know, remain constant, or has it completely tanked? Mm. At that point, if it has completely tanked, you need to reevaluate. It doesn't necessarily that mean that you have to pull out, but you need to step back and completely reevaluate looking at the facts of everything, just the facts, not how you feel. Look at the facts. If it has tanked and continues to tank, you might have a decision to make. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you got to do it based on the information. And finally, um, how do you determine your return of, of return on investment? So what is that? The return on investment, ROI, is a calculation of value and investment or the person you're with versus the cost. That's what you put up. It's used to evaluate the efficiency of the investment. So what that looks like is, is the person that you're with versus what you put up, what you put into, what you put into them or what you put into the relationship. The efficiency of it is uh, like the, produ the productiveness of it, the effectiveness, the structure, the competency of the relationship. So there's a formula for determining your return of investment. And it's expressed as a ratio. So it's net profit divided by the cost of the investment. Your net profit is what you get after you've put in the work. Oh. What you get after you've put in the work. That's over. That's divided by the contract price of the acquired investment, which means what was promised in the agreement. Mm. What you get after you've put in the work over what was promised in the agreement. A lot of times there is a, a disconnect or the ratio is so out of balance because something wasn't done. We get into these contracts, be them written or spoken or implied, whatever. Somebody somewhere didn't hold up their end of the agreement. They didn't do what they said they were going to do. They didn't show up in the way that they said they were going to show or they showed up and then they turned and became something else. That's a problem. That's the cost of the investment. Did you show up the way you said you were going to show up? And did you do the work? When you compare those two, if it balances out, then the return on your investment will be great. Mm, I love it. I love it. I do. I mean, it's it, just like you said, it's basically what's in it for me. Not only is it what's in it for me, but am I willing to risk, like you said, my mental health, my right. my relationships with my family and my friends? All, all that makes sense, Kim. It, all of absolutely. that makes sense. What do you guys think? Absolutely. Let's talk, fam. I think that's so deep that like what you said, we go from relationship. I know, I know people that go from relationship to relationship. Like, mm -hmm. hey, take a breather, take a break, get right. to know yourself. Are you exactly. comfortable with 
yourself, you know, before exactly. you take with that trauma into that relationship. And now it's Absolutely. a hot mess. Oh <laughs> Absolutely. It Absolutely. A hot mess. Oh my it gosh. Is. You guys make sure you put questions in here for Kim. Um some yes, of the comments please. that were said um is you know um uh Mark said don't mislead the other party. Be honest. That's right. going back to what he was saying. You know, when, mm -hmm. as you're getting to know that person, right. are you worth me saying more than just hello to you? Right. Um, Richard said, um, "Is if it's just a booty call, make sure the other person knows it also." Let's go back to that thirty minutes. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, because that's how that's how things turn into what fatal attraction, psycho. Yes, indeed. Because she yes, thought they do. I thought she was gonna love me, and he like, no, nah, it was just right. Like, Right. And don't say though. See, that's another thing because people will say, I love you in the heat of a moment, or they'll say it because if they say those words to the other, the other party, then that's going to give them an advantage, at least for that moment. But when you start messing with people's emotional state, you are ultimately putting yourself in danger on so many levels. Don't Ooh. play with people's emotions. If you don't love them, don't say that. If you don't like them, don't say that you do. Don't pretend that you do. If you don't want to be bothered, don't try to force yourself into doing it because energy attracts energy and energy doesn't lie. People Ooh. lie, but the energy doesn't lie. And karma is real. Ooh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So it's, it's a lot. A lot goes into it. It's a business. Relationships are businesses. That's what Raheem That's what, said. Yep. It's yes, a business. It is it really a is. business. Oh my gosh. That is so deep, you know, and that's why you see things on the news, unfortunately, of, you know, boyfriends, you know, doing things that a girlfriend and a girlfriend and, oh, it's just a mess. But I think if everybody yeah. goes into it knowing, hey, let me get to know you, let me tell you. And you know, something else that I think you mentioned on another segment was, I think it's important to know what kind of upbringing that person, what kind of parents did you Absolutely. have? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> How were you we're raised? We're afraid to ask those questions. We're, we've gotten afraid to ask those, those questions because it immediately is like, well, if I ask them this question, they're going to run away. Then let them. That You're answers right. your question. Right. That right. was the answer to your question. If you can't ask a person 101 questions about themselves and they're and they say they're interested in you without them getting a, a attitude about it, they ain't the one. Exactly. Find somebody else that you can ask 101 questions to. Exactly. Exactly. Because you, like you, you got to be evenly yoked. You know, if you were raised Absolutely. one way and they were raised another way, how is that going to flow? You know, right. Um, it, maybe their value isn't in being clean and keeping the house clean. Right. Yours is, you know, so. Right. Oh, right. That's so deep. That's so deep. A lot of people yeah. tolerate things that they just they don't like and they don't want or they don't deserve just because they don't want to be by themselves. Oh, it's like they're afraid of themselves so they'll accept anything to prevent them from having to deal with self and that's oh. crazy that's suicide that's emotional suicide because in the long run they're gonna get hurt they're going absolutely to get hurt. Oh absolutely that's so yeah. sad um uh, mark also made a comment he said life is what you make it live right god will get you through it that's so true i like that other um we're almost running out of time but i like that analogy where you're talking about things go up and down but are you gonna eventually you're gonna eventually you know be and you gotta make sure you get through it and i think that's what mark is saying you know Absolutely. just have faith in god that he will get you through it oh that's Absolutely. so deep oh, you gotta pay attention to this i'm I'll just say this real quick you have the sun and the moon right mm -hmm. when the sun comes up the moon rests. Mm. When the sun goes down, the moon is out. So there's wow. a balance. Right. There has to be a balance. You can't always, it can't always just be the sun. It can't always just be the moon. There's mm. going to be an up and down time, but it's balance. Wait on it. Work mm. toward it. It's, it's coming. Deep. It's coming. Have patience. Oh, God, that's so oh my gosh I cannot wait till you come back again yes, make sure you go back and read the comments and um and, and once we put it up on Ruku I'll make sure to forward them to you as well okay. oh my gosh I love you to pieces thank I you so you much too. for coming on I can't wait oh, for next okay. month you guys okay. in, tell me <laughs> what, what do you want her to cover next month you know she's here every month so yeah. put in there what y'all want her to cover what's hot you know yeah, maybe I'll do it. Really, um, those those girls and guys that um 
break up uh, when they know Christmas is coming, so they don't have to pay any money. Right, <laughs> right. Oh, we oh, look. We can talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> we can talk about <laughs> those seasonal relationships. I know, can... right? I know. <laughs> I will definitely be in touch and we look forward to having you on next month. You be safe. Have a happy holiday season. Thank you. You do the same. It's always a pleasure, my sister. <laughs> All right, sis. Talk to you soon. Okay, love. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. She is amazing, you guys. I love her. She be spitting the truth, you know. Um, I always hear these different things from girlfriends or family members that are in relationships and they always say, well, why did this happen? And you know, I, you know, I just think she's good. She's good at what she does. She does it for a living and she is phenomenal. So um, you guys make sure you tune in every month when she comes on so she can cover those uh, relationship issues. So as we close out the show, you know, now that we're in Ruku, we got to stay within an hour. So as we close out this show, I just want to leave you guys with this positive thought. Be thankful for what you have, right? We've, had, we've already been through Thanksgiving, but still be thankful for what you have. Remember, you pray for that job. Now you're complaining about it. Remember, you pray for that husband, that car, that kid, that house, what have you. Now you're complaining and fussing about it. Don't fuss about it. Be grateful for what you have and thank God for what you have. Be content with what you have and he will bless you with so much more. Another thing I want to share with you guys is this holiday season, give a small token of appreciation to the people that are in your life, whether it be the janitor, your barber, the security guard at your office building, show your appreciation to them. Even if it's something as simple as going to buy a lottery ticket and giving it to them and, and, and watching them have fun and scratching it off to see if they've won anything, right? Do something, whether it's a $10 gift card for them to go have lunch or a meal, do something for them. And as I tell you, every guy, you guys every week, do one good thing for one person and you can affect 365 lives. Stay safe out there and have a safe and happy holiday season. We will talk again before um, the year is out. And if no one's told you they love you, know that I love you. And with those words, I'm out.